There might be a little bit of delay on the slides, uh, whatnot. So if anyone is having a little bit of trouble keeping up with us, just let us know and we will slow down for you. And guys, you know, just really quick before we even get started, I want to say there, yes, there will be a recording of this, um, but there will be a, um, if there's any internet problems or whatever, we will log back in. Just bear with us because it is the Philippines and crazy stuff happens here. Um, to get started, we just want to talk a little bit about our story. We don't want to get into that too much because a lot of you already know kind of, you know, where we are, where we're coming from. Um, we started this in De uh, December 2010. The idea was to make a little bit extra money and keep our agents employed. We spent a little over $2,000 and a boatload of my time and we made how much in December? $33, December 2010. Yeah, so. 33 bucks, guys. So. You know, this is, you know, there is a bit of risk up front, especially as you're getting started. And if you want to do it at scale, we figured that out pretty quickly. I'd say that by the second or third month, I was a bit bummed. Uh, we were still not making much money. And, but then like the writing was on the wall, I'd say March or April of 2011. Yeah. I mean, you know, one of the real fantastic parts of it was for sure was when we started flipping the sites at auction. Um, I really found that to be a compelling part of the business model. It let us grow our, uh, you know, site creation quickly, right? Right, because we were able to refund our business, put the money back into our business, and and, and build scale out, things, build out our team, yeah, yeah everything. Yeah, the, the, the scaling ability at that point, because we we had the cash to spend, was was pretty fantastic, and that's when we decided to to really document everything on AdSense Flippers, right? Yeah, yeah. We started AdSense Flippers in May mm -hmm. um, and put out a few posts, didn't get much traffic, and it really started to pick up a few months after that. And we started to sell off a bunch of sites and that type of thing. So let's get into kind of, you know, why we're doing this, why we're doing the guide. Well, we started off, um, you know, I was looking for things for us to do. We did some, uh, some really small stuff. Uh, um, like micro task kind of things where you do like little jobs or whatever and we had our agents doing it and they were making like 80 cents an hour and it like wasn't enough to pay their salary. So we started looking elsewhere. I started reading through the warrior form and I don't know if you guys are, are you know warrior members but you know there's some good information there but a lot of it's crappy so I spent a lot of time digging through information that wasn't that useful. Oh my god I, just, I remember you know you going through all that stuff and me looking at it going this is just crap this is all Oh, you're going to be a millionaire. You're going to do this. You know all those promises and very little substance. Yeah, but then there's re there's some really sharp people in there too, yeah. right? So you come across them and you're like, wow, you know, this guy really knows what he's talking about. This person's really really smart. It's great to, uh, you know, great to find them. But it's just like it's such a bear to dig through. Right. Anyway, came across a guy named X Factor mm -hmm. that was creating niche sites. He'd been doing it for a couple of years. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with uh, X Factor. His name is John, and he'd had some success. And then I came across another guy uh, that had been selling niche sites that were earning, and, and said he was getting you know pretty good multiples, and it was a nice little business model. So I was like, you know, why don't we you know take this and, and kind of you know put them together and see what we can do as far as building out and then selling earning sites. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Uh, looks. Looks like we um, uh, lost internet here briefly, so apologize for that. And we'll just move along. We can move right along. So, Justin, why? What prompted us to actually put the guide together? Do you remember? Yeah. Well, um, you know, we were trying to do it through blog posts. We we're going over our keyword research, really kind of laying out our process. Um, but unfortunately, it got kind of mixed up. Like, you know, we put out a blog posts about this that or the other and it wasn't really as clear or as clean as we'd like right so now if you're on our email list you'll get an email early on that kind of like gives you a link to each specific part keyword research one keyword research two I think that was helpful but we figured we should just write a guide that kind of like steps you through the entire process also something you can use uh, to help with training for outsourcers um, to get your other partner up to speed if you're uh, doing business together you know that type of thing so we figured a guide, you know, A to Z would probably help with that. Right. And so um, one thing we did realize was that uh, if we if we tried to write the guide ourselves, we'd probably spend way too much time on that, right? Well, well that's the problem is, you know, we've got the outsourcing thing. We've got ads and servers writing content there. We are actually building sites, making sure our agents are doing everything they're supposed to do. And we weren't able to, uh, you know, keep up. 
you're right, Luke, we did cut out BMR, uh, and we'll get into that in a bit. But uh, you know, we really needed to make sure that we had a nice, clear process so we could lay it out for everyone. And that was one of the things we wanted our intern to do. Yeah, and the other thing about the intern was we had this guy coming out here. We had several things about him uh, that was, uh, he needed to be able to do for us, and we knew he needed to learn our process really well. So we said, why not kill two birds with one stone, right? Document the process. It will be something that we'll be able to give to our readers and listeners, uh, and he'll learn the process at the same time. Right? Yeah, because he could best help us if he knows the process extremely well. So we were having him sit down with each of our agents. We would go over everything with him and make sure that he was, he knows our process in and out, backward, back and forth, you know, knows it exactly. And so we figured that'd be a great way for us to get him out here, get it documented and get it out to you. Plus, so, it's just nice to have some, you know, you know, hard documentation so you guys kind of, you know, get our process and we can pass that out. This will be a living document. We're gonna have to update it, obviously. And when we talk about link building a little bit, we're going to refer to our blog probably more often than not because that's the thing that tends to change more often, right? Right. Um, so our link building is a bit, and the guide is kind of vague. We talk about what we do, um, but we're going to refer you to our blog for some of the link building stuff. Now, before we even get started, we should give you a disclaimer uh, and let you know that just because uh, it worked for us in this process doesn't mean that it's replicable by everybody. So, you know, in fact, we have no idea if this will make money for you or not. We have no idea if you'll put a bunch of money at risk and lose it all. We have no idea. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I'd have to say I was, I've been listening to this audiobook uh, about randomness and luck and stuff like that. It's called The Drunkard's Walk. It's, uh, uh, it's a lot of math involved in the book, but it's a pretty good read if you guys have the time. Um, and it says, you know, randomness plays a big part of life a lot more than you think. And I would say the same thing is true for this process. Even if you did exactly the same thing that we do, you might not get the same results. What was the book title? Uh, the Drunkard's Walk. The Drunkard's Walk. Yeah, Joe's trying to get me to read it. So it's one of those things he said. It's, it's perception changing, so it's worth uh, taking a look at. Um, you know, another thing I'd like to mention is that we really want you to um, expand with your own knowledge. So like whatever you bring to the table, like we bring outsourcing, right? Uh, a process, we're very process oriented. So those are some of the things we excel at. But if you're detail or, you know, you're really good content. at- Yeah, really design. good at content, design. Those are things you bring to the table so you can be better at it, right? I think we went the small mini site niche route because that fits our skill set best. But there are other guys out there that build very large sites like uh, Carrie Bergeron, even, I mean, you know, a Pat Flynn with Smart, uh, Smart Passive Income, he did a security guard training, and that may be better for your skill sets. Yeah. So you don't have to necessarily do the mini niche sites, it just happened to be better for us. Right. Um, and I think it's an easy way to get started too, because like a lot of the authority sites, it may take a lot longer to see results, whereas the mini sites, you can see results faster. So for someone just starting off, I think it's more effective. I mean, it's definitely one of the reasons we did it. I didn't want to wait around 12 months uh, to see whether the site was going to be successful, right? Right. Now, so let's talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about today, Justin, and, and kind of the plan. Uh, go over this quickly, but yeah. So we're not going to be able to go through everything in the guide, and you know, you probably wouldn't want us to. We're going to specifically talk about things like uh, seed keywords, so where we find our seed keywords, you know, how that works, uh, keyword research uh, in general. We're going to talk about objective evaluation. Um, so how we get all the different uh, uh, you know, numbers for what we do, how we have our keyword researchers put all the numbers together and we can like take out some of the, or the potential keywords from there. We're also going to talk about subjective evaluation, how we specifically look at the first page of Google to determine whether or not we think we can get the sites ranked. And then we're going to introduce the guide, so give you kind of an idea or an overview on that, just kind of look at some of the main points, topics, and some of the stuff that's in there. And then we're going to have a, a Q&A section at the end, which is kind of my favorite. I'm really excited about the Q&A because it's, it's a chance to actually you know, talk to you guys directly and hear what you have questions about um, and you can ask us directly. Uh, Mark, I, I saw your question about uh, uh, niche sites versus authority sites. We'll try to get to that at the end. Um, keep in mind for those of you just joining that your chat is public. Uh, so if you could keep those questions to the end, that would be great. Um, yeah, I, I think you know the biggest thing to know about this webinar is it's our first webinar, so bear with us. 
Um, but we are covering, focusing on keyword research because we think that's a big part of what we do to make our success happen. Yeah, right? the most important thing for sure is keyword research. And so a lot of times people do like, you know, broad instead of exact or things like that. There's still like, you know, 799 ebooks to talk about that. And yeah. you need to look at broad, right? Someone, I think Steve was telling us the other day that or something. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, the, the, the guide does cover more than just keyword research. It's an A to Z guide. Um, but there's, it's probably 30% of it is dedicated to, the, to keyword research because that, that is a critical part. So let's get into the first part of keyword research, which is specifically seed keywords. We like to refer to keyword research as you know mining for gold. So we're going to use this analogy throughout the whole thing, so bear with us a little bit. <laughs> seed keyword is definitely picking where you want to set up your location. So do you want Northern California? Do you want the Fresno area? Like where do you want to set up your mine? Um, you know, the importance of seed keyword research, really seed keywords are not, I think, as critical as some of the other stuff we're gonna talk about. Uh, but a lot of people have questions about like, where do you find your seed keywords, yeah, right? Like, they, how, always, they, always get the, they always get stuck or hung up on this. And I think that's because, um, you know, uh, they want it to be uh, more mathematical. Like they want just a list of seed keywords they can go through, and and that's that's not the way that works. That requires a little bit of original kind of thought, I think, right? Yeah, and and you see a lot of people, and we'll mention this too. I mean, one of the, the great places you can find seed keywords would be something simple like going to Amazon and seeing which products are selling, which are popular right now. But it doesn't have to be limited to online research. I think yeah, a, a I, lot of a lot of people talk about their strategies like as if they live in their mom's basement. Yeah, but see, yeah, the problem with Amazon, I, I like that one. I mean, of course, if you go to Amazon, you look for products there, and you try to find seed keywords, um, you're going to find some good stuff. But it's going to be all other online keyword researchers are going to be looking there as well, right? Yeah, I mean, everyone's going to be pulling from the same source. So, so you know, one of the great places to go if you're... Um, let's say, you know, you're looking for uh, uh, products for men, a great place to go, go to your garage. Yeah. What do you have in your garage? What do you use on a regular basis? What are you looking for right now? Yeah, I mean, really, really <laughs> look around your room or basement. Yeah, look around and see what you have. Go to the mall. Walk up and down the street, right? Yeah. Um, I love this one. Uh, the girls were going to hate me for this, but go through your lady's handbag and look at products in there. Because um, those kind of products are a great idea. As we found great success with women's products and with blue collar products, things you would find in a woman's handbag or things you find in the garage as, as keyword research. Um, something else, the pharmacy, right? Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of great keyword ideas at the pharmacy. Yeah, like I, I'm not a big like medications guy. I don't, I don't buy lots of medication or whatever, but if you go to the pharmacy, you could start to find like what people are searching for and use that for a seed keyword. You'd be surprised at some of the medication that people are searching for that you could get ranked for relatively easily. So Yeah, we've done niche sites, uh, several, not to be a little disgusting here, but we've done several on, on constipation, different types of constipation and their, and their cures, sources and stuff. And that's been uh, quite good. Yeah, so really, really random stuff like that. Um, uh, you, I think you want to kind of avoid the places that everyone else is looking. I mean, Amazon's pretty big, so you're going to find products that not a lot of other niche researchers are finding there. But, I mean, there's a lot of us, right? There's a lot of people looking for niche ideas. So staying away from things that are necessarily just Amazon and looking around is great. I like Pinterest. Someone said check out Pinterest. I think that's a good idea as well. Yeah, I mean, you want you want to make sure it's something that advertisers are going after. So you want it to be product related or service related in some sort, right? Yeah, someone mentioned like older, uh, you know, elderly as being, um, you know, looking for keywords that they might be looking for. I kind of agree. I don't know though. Like the search volume from like I know that my grandmother searching online is a joke. Like she'll get you know one of the grandkids to search for her, but her actually searching is not very likely. Yeah, interesting. I, I don't know. I mean, I would guess as that demographic gets larger and larger. Twenty years from now, yeah, these are people who have been you know we're on the internet in their prime, I guess you know. But yeah, I don't know if you want to build your niche site around what search volume is going to be in twenty years though. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think one of the other factors we always talk about and it's important to remember is you're looking for a conduit here between what people shop for and what advertisers want to advertise for, right? There's, there's that, um, that gap in online 
what's available online. And that's really what you're providing when you do these kind of niche sites. So that's what your seed, key, seed keywords need to be about. Yeah, my, grand, my granddad can't use a cell phone, so internet is a no-go. I hear you, Jared. <laughs> um, <coughs> when you get these ideas, great ideas to write it down. I, you know, I use something like Evernote, um, which I have on my phone, I have on my laptop, I have on my Kindle yeah. Fire. So, I mean, I can write those, uh, those ideas down and look them up later. Um, you can just put it in Notepad, you know, Google Doc, whatever, and then give that to your VA or you know, keep it for yourself if you're going to use it later. Yeah, and, you know, it's really important to write this stuff down because you can absolutely forget about it and go, oh, I had such a great one, but I forgot. So make sure to have some sort of way to, to take track of that. Um, you know, collecting the objective data is something that you should do in the beginning and you should learn how to do. And uh, we're going to cover that here. But eventually, if you are scaling the process, it's probably not something that you can do all by yourself. So that's uh, one of the things you could, you could look at getting a VA for. So let's give an example really quick of how we might find a seed keyword, Joe. All right. Go ahead and open up the Google Keyword Tool. All right. So those of you who really, uh, you know, for, for anyone who's like really brand new, when you're using the Google Keyword Tool, make sure you're signed in. You're going to get more keyword examples if you are signed in. So make sure that you're signed into the Google Keyword Tool and then go ahead and do your search. This would be really quick, really easy. Scrape box, look funny. Okay, so I'm going to um, have the, uh, the, the keyword tool here. One thing, yeah, make sure to, you're logged in. Um, the keyword we came up with last night that we thought was pretty good was uh, uh, luggage, right? Sorry about that, really bad speller, bad typer too. <laughs> so you go ahead, you go to the Google Keyword Tool, you type in your, um, uh, your, Root, yeah, your, your, seed your, your, your seed keyword. Yeah, I really picked luggage. My girlfriend bought a nice little pink uh, piece of luggage. I, I, I wouldn't call it little. It was, yeah, yeah, huge. It's not small. <laughs> <laughs> she, she absolutely didn't need it. I don't know why she got it. But um, One of the things to, to know about this whole webinar, actually, is um, we've tried to zoom in as big as I can to make things nice and big for you. So if it's not big enough, uh, John will stop me and, and let me know to zoom in. So Or squint. Uh, yeah, or you'll just need to squint. Um, one of the things you're always going to need to click on is exact. Um, you want to make sure to click on this and, and unclick broad. Justin, you made that mistake when you initially did your keyword research, right? When you started this whole process. Yeah, I donked that up, man. We did some uh, knit sites around things that ended up getting, you know, 80 exact match searches a month. Now they ranked, but, you know, the traffic was dismal. We got a little bit of long tail on there, you know, made a little bit of money, but. I think, I think that's a common mistake. I think people screw that up you know, in the beginning often. They're like, well, it gets 400,000 searches a month. Well, on broad it does, right? Yeah, yeah we've all, I think most of us have done that, so. So we're gonna uh, put in some advanced options here. I mean, we always check off the United States. We always check off English. Um, we always look at desktop and laptop uh, devices. A great idea is to put local monthly searches, have it over 500, so you're not wasting any time with the small stuff. And then you're going to add another one, make sure that your CPC um, is at least uh, 70 cents. Let me go ahead and search. You can scroll down, you can sort by local monthly searches, which I think it already is, all right, no. And then you can get some ideas here. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons, we'll get into why it's lower than most people recommend in a bit, um, but you'll get some ideas here. Um, you'll see things like, actually click on uh, local monthly searches, let's sort by that. So you want to skip, obviously, the really high stuff. I mean, carry-on luggage, laptop bags is going to be available. And why, why, why do we want to skip that, Justin? Uh, because the searches are so damn high, there's no damn way that there's going to be a, 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 domain. UR, a domain available right. for those. Um, I'd also kind of, especially if you're doing this manually, you can use tools like Longtail Pro, obviously. But if you're, you're just starting off using Google Keyword Tools, probably your best bet. 
Um, but you want to skip some of the ones that are, are generally two word phrases. So things like luggage sets probably isn't going to be available. Uh, LuggageReviews.net probably not going to be available. But some of the three uh, keyword stuff might be. So scroll down a little further, Joe. So you might find things like uh, Eagle Creek Luggage might be available. Scroll down a little further. Things like this, uh, personalized luggage tags. Yeah, I really like that one. Um, I mean, a good CPC of, of, of 2.59, 2,400 searches, so that's plenty. Um, uh, and personalized luggage tags, uh, it's a nice... Um, uh, yeah, it's a nice keyword. General so, term. A great thing you can do here now is, I don't know if personalized luggage tags is available, personalizedluggagetags.net or whatever. Um, but uh, what you can do is now use that as a new C keyword uh, and you can put that in uh, again and see what you get when you put in personalized luggage tags. So you can kind of just uh, refresh those. Yeah, some will buy it before this is over. We've got a couple of keywords that actually are available, we'll get into in a few minutes. But you know, this is how we do our C keyword research. One seed may lead to another, which lets you like, kind of like go further down the rabbit hole. Um, you know, you may, you may not have thought of personalized luggage tags at first, but there may be a whole industry around personalized luggage tags and a bunch of companies that sell it. And they may have, you know, you may come up with Hello Kitty luggage tags gets 1300 exact match searches and has a CBC of a buck 80, maybe a great keyword for you to target. You'll never know unless you put that in as your seed keyword. So that is, uh, that's the example for C keywords. Let's do a really quick, a long tail pro giveaway. So here'll be the first one. Only do this if you don't have long tail pro right now and you'd like to get a copy um, and you have Twitter open. What I'd like you to do is put any message out there. Just make sure it has the at AdSense flippers in it and make sure you link to AdSenseFlippers.com. And we'll take a look, see who put a message out, and give you a copy of Longtail Pro. Um, yeah, so, you know, uh, the, the next thing, the next part of the webinar that we're going to get into is, is collecting these um, objective uh, things in a uh, nice, easy to read spreadsheet, which I think is something that people don't do. Um, it's, it's pretty important that you go ahead and, and, and list these things. But we're going to get into what this means and how to do this a little bit later. Um, but in the meantime, how are we doing on, uh, on a bunch of tweets, buddy? Let's see who is going to do it here. Sweet. All right, let's go with Brad Acker. Brad, you are the winner of a copy of Longtail Pro. Congratulations, Brad. We will uh, we'll connect with you after the webinar, and you'll have uh, your copy of Longtail Pro. Glad you, we could uh, help you out. We'll have some more of these a little bit later. In the meantime, let's go back to our slides, and we'll go over some objective evaluation, some of the stuff you're going to want to look uh, for as far as the numbers go. So now that we've done uh, you know, some seed keyword research, we've got an idea on kind of like an area that we want. We're going to need the data, right? We're going to need the objective stuff, the, the really the hard numbers. So we wanted to cover some of the hard numbers that we pull up. And, and all of these hard numbers can be pulled from the Google Keyword Tool. Well, not all of them, actually. There's, there's a lot of different areas you need to pull them from. Yeah. And we're going to go through that right now. We're going to make it very, very easy. But this... To, to, to continue with our little bit of gold digging analogy. Yeah, right. once you've set the place that you want the mine to be, the objective research is actually pulling out all the dirt. So you've got your mountain, now you're gonna be carving it up um, so that you can later on go through and pan through for the gold. But this is just basically bringing in the big trucks and really cutting through the dirt, big chunks of it, and seeing you know what it is that you'll be able to use. Yeah, don't don't try to get too nitty gritty here. I think that's where people make a lot of mistakes, Justin. They get their seed keyword, their seed keyword is general enough, but then with their objective research, they try to get too fancy. This you just want to load a whole bunch of stuff into your spreadsheet so that you can do your evaluation later. Yeah, as long as it fits, you're going to put it in the spreadsheet. So. 
At this point, we like to make sure we have at least five to one. So if I want to pull out, you know, 20 sites that week, I need at least uh, 100 uh, of these in the spreadsheet that I can pull from, right? Yeah, because only one in five is going to qualify through either the objective or the subjective uh, uh, research. Yeah, that's so important to remember. I mean, I remember when we, before we knew that stat, Justin, we weren't pulling enough. We we're like, oh, I need 20 keywords for this week, so I'll just pull 20 keywords, and then we, we'd only get five. Yeah, yeah. And we'd be like, what the hell's going wrong? And we just realized that because we're drilling down on this stuff, you need to have a lot more stuff available. So let's talk about some of the things that you're going to need. First thing, let's go over the critical metrics. Local exact searches over 500. Now, here's the reason we do 500 um, instead of like 1,000, right? A lot of people will tell you 1,000. Um, but if you stick with what everyone else is doing, you're going to miss out on some really good keywords. I mean, would you take a keyword that had 850 exact match searches that had a you know, CPC of $4.80 and a ton of advertisers? Hell yes, I would. Yeah. So, you know, if you stick to just the thousand and just a dollar CPC, you're going to miss out. Ultimately, it's going to be is that Thor's hammer. <laughs> That's yeah. funny, Chad. You threw me off, buddy. But yeah, like ultimately, it's, it's going to be a, a, a balance between local exact searches and a CPC. Yeah. Yeah, so your CPC, we want to be higher than 70 cents. It looks like 10 cents there, but it's actually supposed to be 70 cents. Um, uh, and again, like Jess was saying, it's a balancing act. But, you know, sometimes you guys will see crazy stats from the Google Keyword Tool, and I think we should address that now. Yeah, sometimes you'll see, like, uh, a CPC of, like, 40 cents for, like, a branded keyword or something. I'm not exactly sure why that happens. I have, my thought is that, like... Um, the advertiser has gone in there and put that they're willing to pay up to $40 CPC, and so that's why it says it's a $40 CPC, or it's just broken. Uh, Google Keyword Tool is not exact. It's not exact science, so sometimes you'll see like really odd CPC. So if it's out of whack, we normally just uh, ignore it. Yeah, the example I have written here in my notes is like, if you see a local search of 480 with a CPC of $17, something's wrong oh well no it could be like insurance or something if it's not insurance if it's luggage tags yeah and it's a 17 dollars cpc i would dismiss that because you got to think about it from the advertiser's perspective right they're not going to be willing to pay 17 dollars on a product that only cost 40 bucks i mean there'd be no way that they could make a positive roi yeah, yeah doran says lawyers hell yes they're willing to pay 17 bucks or a of lot course, more yeah yeah one that makes sense that, gonna be, yeah, that you know, makes sense so if you see that on 17 dollars cbc on, a, on a, you know a, a legal term of course that does make sense um, now here's here's where it gets critical right so an seo value of ten dollars and here's how we we talk about this in the guide but here's how we determine seo value it's exact match search times cpc times one percent so you'll see that if you have a local exact match search of a thousand you have a cpc of a, of one dollar that'll give you an seo value of ten bucks so you know something like 700 exact match searches with a three dollar cpc would qualify because of the SEO value. Something with you know 6,000 exact match searches with a CBT, CBC of 72 cents, again, would qualify because of the SEO value. So determining your own SEO value, not using Market Samurai to do it for you, will give you a good idea. Whatever you use for SEO value, make sure that you use it at the same time all the time. SEO value for us would be local exact searches, times CPC times 1%. 0.01. So how we came up with that was, you know, we used to use Market Samurai. Market Samurai had their own internal um, computation for SEO value. We determined at here at AdSense Flippers that um, multiplying it times 1% worked pretty well for us. Yeah, and basically whatever you do, just make sure you do the same thing every time so you can go back and look at old keywords and see how they stack up. If you change it, change it for everything always. Yeah, and these formulas will be in the guide. This, so, is, this is more of just a comparison thing anyway. Something to remember here, um, you know, I always used to get this confused when I first started doing this two years ago, was the difference between AdWords competition and SEO competition. You want a high AdWords competition. You want advertisers, right? Yeah. Uh, and the Google Keyword Tool tells you on a scale of point. Zero zero or point zero one to one, 
um, what kind of AdWords competition you have. And it, you really want an AdWords competition of more than 0.4 or higher, because that tells you that there's enough advertisers in here that are willing to pay those CPCs. If one advertiser goes away, you're not going to lose your entire CPC there. Yeah, we grade our AdWords competition. We grade it on a scale from one to five. So we go into this in the guide as well. Uh, zero to point two is a one. Point two to point four is a two. Point four to point six is a three and up. We don't. We won't go after anything that's a three or lower. So if it's point four to point six, we'll probably still go after it. But lower than that, we won't. Here's the reason why. You might have like a three dollar CPC. But you might only have two advertisers battling it out, right? So you have two advertisers paying around three bucks for CBC, and everyone below that paying like you might get three three cent clicks, yeah, and four gonna, cent clicks. So you're going to have probably more than one ad block on mm -hmm. your page. Exactly. So you're going to end up getting really crappy CPC because there simply aren't enough advertisers battling it out. This is a pretty critical me metric. <laughs> if the domain is not available, <laughs> you probably shouldn't be looking at it. So we might even uh, put that higher. I don't know. But most, most automated tools out there, they go ahead and they check the domain if the domain is available. Um, so you don't want to spend a lot of time on any keywords that don't have it available. Yeah, and here's the thing, too. You know, a lot, lots of people, they, they ask, well, can I use a prefix or a suffix? Can I go after a dot .info or a dot .biz? You can. You can do you know anything you like. We we don't. Um, uh, we know that you can get ranked with a prefix or suffix. So if you're going after you know hot money, you know you can put hotmoneytips.net. Sure, uh, but uh, you know we don't do that. We figure there's enough keywords out there we can go after .net, .org, or .coms only. Yeah, uh, David. There's just some talk about .info right now. Um, you know, we tried, we did some testing with .info. We had some .infos that worked, that made us a bunch of money. But it took a lot longer to rank, right? Like, it seemed like, we did enough .infos where I think I can say this, that a .info across the board was harder to rank. .biz was really bad. Yeah, here's the question too, though, and I don't know, I, I don't know the answer to this. Was the .info or .biz harder to rank simply because there are more people targeting that keyword? Do you know what I mean? Like if yeah. only the dot .info or dot .biz are available, it means it's a more targeted keyword. So maybe it's just harder to rank because of that. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I can't say. That, this was a long time ago that we really kind of tested this out, but that's, that's what we found. But to keep it simple, don't use prefixes or suffixes. Stick to the dot .com, dot .net, dot .org when you're looking for your domains. And then you can rule out all those little alternatives. It's when you start to introduce those into your process oh, well, I am trying dashes, I am trying prefixes, I am trying dot biz. You don't know if it's your process that's broken or your keyword research, so. So here's some of the less critical things, would be phrase to broad. So this is just a percentage of how many uh, phrase searches there are to broad searches. Um, if it's less than 10, uh, then we don't like to go after the keyword. So yeah, less usually, than 10%. Usually when we see less than 10%, that's usually if there's some odd wording um, and most of the time, the exact match is not searched for that much. Yeah, luggages tags, not luggage tags, luggages tags. Yeah, or something. something weird like that, where some people search for it. But what that generally means, if it's less than ten percent, Google is going to know it's an oddly worded phrase, and you're going to be competing against other phrases that are. Um, much more difficult. So you'll think, oh, I found an easy one here, but it's not because Google knows they actually mean this other phrase, which is not so easy. I hope that makes sense. I'm not yeah, sure I explained yeah, that Yeah, well. no, it, it makes sense, Justin. It's just, you, get, you can get these numbers from the Google Keyword Tool or from, again, from any other automated tool to help you collect it. Um, it's not a critical number, but just be aware of it uh, when you're doing your keyword research because Google does link together different phrases for one particular search when it's, it tries to adjust. So, uh, SEO competition. So before, right, we were talking about AdWords competition being uh, really, high. Really quick, Quentin, you asked that uh, is phrase to broad in the Google Keyword Tool. It's not, but you can find out how many uh, phrase match searches there are, how many broad match searches they are, and do your own computation. Right. So if there are 1,000 phrase matches and 10,000 broad matches, you know that's a 10% phrase to broad. Hope that helps. 
You want better than 10%. If it's under 10%, that's not great. Yeah. Another non-critical metric is SEO competition. This was, you know, we used this pretty heavily when we started off. Um, yeah, we, we, I remember when we first started, we said no more SEO competition. 100,000. I thought it was 50,000. It was, it was really low. Really low. So we were really limiting ourselves. Like, and SEO competition, just when you go to Google and you know, type in, in quotations, your phrase, right? Whatever you're going for. And it's the number of pages that come up. So it's how many phrases or how many pages have online that have that exact phrase that you're using. Um, so yeah, using this is pretty limiting. We've ranked for uh, you know keywords that have over a million on SEO competition, but it's just another metric to look at to give you an idea on how many people, how many pages are talking about that exact phrase. It's an idea. It's a, a, the a most general idea of judging the competition. The most frustrating thing about SEO competition is it does seem to vary from Google. Like you'll search for the same thing in double quotes. Uh, using Google and you'll get a number of pages and then you'll go back tomorrow and search for that same thing and get a different number. So that's why we make it a non-critical metric and, and we say, you know, just something to look at, but, but well, don't rule it out. Yeah, you might be on a different uh, server for Google, right? right? They may have indexed new pages. Who yes, knows? plenty of things change. So a um, last non-critical metric is country. And uh, th this is uh, another ratio thing that we do, local searches versus global searches. Yeah, because we're looking at local search, it doesn't matter so much. And when we, when we say local search, we have it targeted to the U.S. You can tar target Australia, whatever country you like, but we target the U.S. because we're Americans and just more familiar and comfortable with it. Um, but you're going to want to look and see like what percentage of the searches are from uh, you know, that country. So I know if, if I'm searching for a keyword, and I see only like, you know, 30%, 20 to 30% of the searches are from the US. I know it's probably not a US phrase or US brand. So there might be some people in the US that are searching for it, but they're probably Canadians, right? You find out it's a Canadian company, Canadian brand. There's some people in the US looking for it. And it's not critical that I don't do it. We still go after those keywords sometimes. It's just something I'd like to know. Yeah, I mean, the key thing is if it's an English-speaking country that does it, that goes after the majority of the UK, Australia, Canada, something like that, uh, then yeah, that's okay. It's when it's like, you know, South America and most of the content needs to be in Spanish that you're, you know, you're going to have a problem. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, still, it's still going to be... You know, there's enough searches from the U.S. because, you know, we're looking at local search anyway, but it probably means that there are South or Central Americans that are in the U.S. doing those searches mm. and just come across it there. I mean, it works. We can still do it, but uh, I don't know. It's something to look at, but, you know, not, not as critical, obviously. So let's go through a, a few examples really quick of, uh, you know, keywords we have on a spreadsheet. Um, now, I'll let you know that we pre-populated this. So we've pre-filled uh, six examples for you already. Um, can everyone see that okay? Okay, so yeah, what I, what I did here was I just went ahead and took our spreadsheet. We have a spreadsheet like this that our, um, you're gonna see me flipping through uh, programs here, just give it a minute to, to catch up. But uh, we have a spreadsheet that our VA has access to uh, that collects all the objective parameters that we just went over. And we literally have thousands and thousands of keywords in uh, this particular spreadsheet. Yeah, we, we have over 11,000 keywords that we've researched uh, that meet this criteria. So we have agents that will put, that will come up with the seed keywords and then put in all of this objective information for us. And in the guide, there's a copy of this spreadsheet and you'll be able to take this and use this as well. But we want to share it with you and give you an idea of what we're looking at um, and how, you know, how it looks when we see them. So we have our agents put in all this information for us. If it meets the criteria, they'll put it in. You'll see though, there are a couple that don't match, right? So water heater thermal couple, local exact searches, it's over 500. It has a CPC of 3.67 and an SEO value of $26.42 that works for us, right? Um, patio rooms, 880 searches, $3.62 uh, CPC, SEO value of 31 bucks, that works as well. 
Car audio speakers, same thing, 880 with a 98 cent CPC, $8.62 for SEO value. Um, carbon air filter, 720, 212 at 1526. That doesn't work for, or that works for SEO value. A uh, VTEC cordless phone does not work at $7.90 SEO value. Neither does car audio speakers, which we'll get to, but VTEC cordless phone now would not qualify. This is a, a keyword we would not be willing to target because even though it has a high enough uh, exact match search and it has a high enough CPC, you take those two together and it would not work. So we would not be buying that uh, domain. Yeah. The, the, whole, the whole purpose when you're doing objective evaluation, when you're looking at the numbers, your whole point is to get rid of stuff. It's to, to uh, your, your VA has put all these keywords in there. Your whole goal is to find things that don't qualify so you can take them out. I love easy decisions and no's are easy, especially when they're objective. So if I can look at the numbers and say no, I love that. It makes it really easy for me. Yeah, I, I absolutely love objectifying any sort of uh, value. If we could put it on a scale, numberize it, that's really cool. And then vintage clip art here is not going to work either. Uh, again, we, we won't spend too much time on that. Uh, but, but the reason why that's not working is our AdWords competition. So if you look here at our AdWords competition, we only have a two there, which means there's not going to be enough advertisers. Yeah, even though there's a $1.09 CPC, there's probably very few advertisers that are pushing it to that dollar. There'd be a lot of, you know, if there are any advertisers below, they're, they're at like 10 cents or something. You know, I'd also say just from doing a lot of keyword research in my life, clip art is never going to be good because when you search for clip art, are you buying anything? <laughs> is there any buying intention there, any commercial intent? No. When, you're, when you search for clip art, <laughs> you're just looking for something for free. And that's more of the subjective portion, but right now we're just looking at the numbers. The AdWords competition is it makes this one an easy no. Okay. So we got two that we can dump. VTech cordless phone we can dump because of the low SEO value. It's under 10 bucks. And the vintage clip art we can dump because the AdWords competition is too low. It has to be a three or better, or on the Google keyword tool, a 0.4 or better for AdWords competition. All right. Yeah, we're, we're going to look at, you know, someone asked about, well, if it's hard to rank, are you going to get rid of that keyword? That's the next part. We're going to talk about first page evaluation, and that's the subjective part. Uh, before we do that really quick, I just want to ask if you are uh, in this webinar and you would like a free copy of Longtail Pro, please put Longtail, Longtail Pro please in the chat box and you'll have a chance of winning right now. Great. All right, so let's move on to subjective evaluation here. Um, you know, when we talk about subjective evaluation, we're talking about first page evaluation. Um, this is definitely one of the more difficult parts of keyword research, um, but it's it's the pretty important part because if you've if you've picked your place to to mine, and you have all your dirt and all your vehicles picking out big chunks of the mountain, this is when you're sifting through. And you're really looking for those golden nuggets, right? Yeah, I mean, this is the, this is the part that I think is is the kind of the most difficult. Lots of people can struggle with this a little bit, so we want to go over this with some um, some love. <laughs> so, uh, one of the most important things you want to look for is you're looking not only at the uh, you're looking at the page that's ranking on the first page and uh, not the site in general. So you might see a page from YouTube, for example, you're looking at that page's rankings and not you know, how important YouTube is. Same thing for Wikipedia, not how important Wikipedia is, whether that page is ranked. Yeah, you know, I, I'd also say um, uh, it's subjective because nobody knows that what the Google algorithm is, right? Nobody knows exactly how they do their rankings. They don't allow us to know that. So any of the stuff that people give out there is merely advice, and that could change in the future. So it's important that you get used to this. Um, eventually, you're going to become like Neo in the Matrix. You're probably not going to need any, any tools to help you. Um, you're going to just look at it, and you're going to know whether this is something that works for your process or not. Um, you know, let's talk about a couple of things to look for. As Justin was saying, 
you know, you're, you're looking at the page that ranks. This is so important. I made this mistake when I first started doing uh, evaluation. I would look at the domain and not the actual page. Whenever we're, we're, we're talking about this stuff, we're talking about the links to the actual page, the title on the actual page, not the domain in general, okay? Um, you want to look for root level domains. If you see root level domains on the first page, usually root de level domains are very hard to beat, right, Justin? Yeah, that's typically the case. Now, it depends on whether or not it's a niche ads site or not, but if it's like an actual site that offers the product and it's a root domain, it probably means that they're optimized for the keyword that you're trying to get ranked for. Probably not a great sign. So these are just kind of some of the signs you're going to look at. You're also going to look at title and URL match whether it has the exact match in the title or in the URL. Um, if it does, that's less great for you. Uh, if it doesn't, um, that's a good sign. I think another thing, good thing to look for is if it doesn't have an exact, if it's like a partial or broken match in the title or URL, that might be a good sign as well. Yeah, I love that, I, I love that concept, Justin, broken match. So. You know, a lot of times we're going to talk about title match and URL match. Longtail Pro highlights those, but it doesn't highlight exact match. Um, it, if, it, if, if you're searching for three words, it still bolds all those three words, even if they're not in order or if they're separated by other words. Yeah, so for example, let's pretend my keyword is personalized luggage tags, right? And then there's a site that comes up uh, that mentions get, you know, luggage tags that are personalized for you, right, is not as close of a match as if the, the site said personalized luggage tags for cheap. Yeah. Right, so personalized luggage tags for cheap is better optimized than luggage tags that have been personalized for you. Um, so if you see broken match uh, phrases like that, you'll have a better chance for getting ranked. Yeah. Hope that's clear. I think, I think that is. We'll, we'll, when we do the first page evaluation on Tail Pro, we can check it out a little bit more. Um, again, like I was saying before, backlinks to that page, not to the domain. So when we're talking about how easy a site is to beat um, or how much easy a page is to beat, you need to look at the backlinks to that page. The page rank of that page is, is, is pretty key as well, along with the domain age. Uh, obviously, you don't have an idea of how old the page is, uh, but you have an idea of how old the domain is, and we know that Google uses that in its calculations. So let's go over some of the positive and negative signs really quick for first page evaluation. Remember, this is a guideline, and this is an, these aren't hard rules. We're going to give you some examples in just a minute, um, but a positive sign would be a pre-existing AdSense site. So if I'm looking up, you know, uh, blue snow boots. Right, and I see a site up there, it's bluesnowboots.org, and I'm looking at picking up bluesnowboots.net. Um, that's a pretty good sign, especially if the site hasn't been there for long. That's a site you can model after. So if there's another exact match search AdSense site already ranked on the first page that was only set up a few months ago, you know you have a pretty good chance of getting there as well because you're going to follow a process that will easily put you on the first page. I, lo I love that one, by the way. When I see that one, I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I, I love it and don't love it, too, because I know that if, it's, if there's already a site there, right, like it, I, it's kind of fun to explore, I don't know, new keywords and get ranked where there aren't other people. But, yeah, if you see a site already there, you know you have a pretty good shot of getting there as well. Um, if you see article directories on the first page for your term, so you see something like, uh, you know, Buzzle or Zazzle or Ezine or Go Articles or eHow or LiveStrong or About.com. You'll see um, eHow a lot um, for, for a lot of these things. If you see that, you know, th those are primarily easy pages to outrank. Yeah, it's, I mean, these are all just kind of signs, right? It's not, there's no guarantees here, but that will help you. Um, Another one is if you see subdomains on the first page. Yeah, we're talking about subdomains. We're talking about something in front of the actual domain name. Uh, so, you know, if you saw, this happens a lot with about.com. Um, so if you were looking for blue ski boots and you saw blue ski boots dot about dot com slash buy my blue ski boots or something like that, those are usually a little bit easier to outrank than the actual uh, keyword being in the domain. Um, Large shopping sites, you know, uh, we used to say 
large shopping sites are always easy to beat. Um, but that's not always true, right? Yeah, specifically if it has a dynamic link. And what we mean by dynamic link is we you see Amazon.com slash... 48ZX9YPS. Yeah. Question mark, equal sign. You know, you see that for eBay. You see that for Amazon. You see that for BizRate. Um, you see that for all of these large uh, conglomerate shopping sites. Yeah, exactly, John. A dynamic link. So that's generally a good sign that you'd be able to beat it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some negatives. A big negative for me, and this is why we don't try to go after keywords that include a location, uh, is Google Places or Maps. Yeah, Google Places results. Here's what happens. Anytime you run a geo-modified search, so if I'm looking for plumbers in Los Angeles, for example, I might have two organics, and then I'll have a bunch of Google Places results. So if I'm trying to get ranked organically, you know, the Google Places are gonna push me down the first page and I'm gonna get a lower click through from the search result or the SERP. So when anytime you see Google Places, it's probably not the best keyword to target unless you know pretty easily you get in the top one or two spots that's above the Google Places section. Niche shopping site. So if I'm trying to get ranked for blue ski boots and skiboots.com is up there and they have a whole section on their blue ski boots and they're selling them and they look like a pretty popular site, that's a sign that it's probably not a great keyword for me. Yeah, it's easy to confuse this with a positive. We're not talking about like big general shopping sites here. We're talking about actual shopping sites that go after that particular niche. Yeah, I would, someone mentioned Zappos. I wouldn't say Zappos. We can outrank Zappos. Sometimes, um, it depends. Yeah, a Zappos yeah. category page, like where if you're looking for men's boots and it comes up zappos.com slash men's boots, that's going to be tough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, this is a great one, branded domain. So if you search for a product or a company, if your keyword is that, and the top three results are stacked with the company's do, uh, uh, URLs, that's going to be a hard page to, to yeah. Do. You'll see this where Google either either they have the site and they have like the categories listed right below it, or they'll have the site and they'll have other links that are below it. Maybe they haven't done that yet for that keyword term or whatever. Um, you know, it's not necessarily a no that you can't go for it. It just means that there's a very good chance you won't be able to be in the top three or four. So you know that brand basically owns the top three or four. You have to determine if being number five, number six, number seven is worth your while or not. A uh, well-optimized site. Um, you know, if you see that uh, blue, has, you're, you're looking. You, you're going to buy blueskiboots.net, and there's blueskiboots.org there. But blueskiboots.org has been there for four years. They have 600 inbound links from legitimate sources. In the title, it's, it's in the It's not like URL. some silly like forum links or like you yeah. know, st stupid article links. Like they're legit good links. Um, probably not a great target for you. Someone asked about brand bias on Google. Um, just real quick about that. Um, you know, we don't shy away from brands necessarily. Uh, unless we see that the first page is just filled with the company search results. Um, and, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure that Google's brand bias. I'm not sure that they care, right? I mean, ultimately, they're 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 serving their users. They're serving their searches, not the brands. I, I think we had a luggage site that made us a ton of money that outranked the actual site, the actual company's luggage site. Now, I would say that's generally rare. Normally, we don't outrank the company site. But in this case, it can we did. happen. Yeah. It can happen. Um, another thing to look for is old domain age as a negative. I mean, it, again, if if it's a root domain and it's ranking, that's a negative right there. But if it's old and it's been around for ten years, this this can be a, a thing to look for. Paul asked, we actually use brand names in the domain sometimes is the best answer. I'd prefer not to, but when we're, we're doing our keyword research, and there are some that fit. Like, you know, if, if I have my choice between two, one of them is branded, you know, one's not, I'd choose the one that, that isn't. But if the one that's branded is, is considerably better keyword, yeah, I'll take the brand. All right, so um, a shopping site category page, uh, again, that's like zappos.com slash men's shoes or amazon.com uh, slash kids betting, and you're going after kids betting. You know, those kind of 
absolute category pages are normally tough to outrank. So when you see those pages in your search result, you're gonna, gonna wanna look for a different keyword. Ah, okay. So before we get to the guide, uh, we wanted to do a, a little bit of a live demo for everybody here. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna do that in Longtail Pro. So bear with me here, I have to zoom in on my computer so you can see some of this. Okay, so how we're gonna head and do this is, um, Pull up the keyword over here. Hold on. I, I'm gonna show you as if we were doing some, some keyword research, so. So let's check for the first one. Water, heater, thermocouple. Right, so um, I just want to make sure everyone can see what I'm looking at here. And uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm in the keyword research spreadsheet that we made. I think it's still updating, so I'll just give it a minute. Yeah, I'm not seeing it yet. Okay, so again, I just bring up the objective results that we had either our virtual assistant collect or that we collected in a spreadsheet. And I'm simply gonna go through them one by one and figure out what works and what doesn't. Uh, and, and how we do that is, is we assign a, a number to that. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but for right now, the first one you can see is water he heater thermocouple, which I'm not even sure what that is. <laughs> We're but, about uh, to find out. So let's do a quick, uh, quick search on Longtail Pro. Okay, so we, when we come into Longtail Pro, we're gonna go ahead and, and click our competitor analysis. And the great thing about Longtail Pro is it's fairly quick. So, you know, you don't have to wait around a lot like you did with Market Samurai. Um, and you know, it's very easy to use. You're just gonna go ahead and copy the, the keyword in there and click on the analyze button. Now again, as time goes on, you're gonna get better and better at your uh, first page evaluation. You may not even need to use a tool like Longtail Pro. You may be able to just look at the SERP directly. Yeah, like Neo, right? Yeah. So I, I'm gonna zoom in on my computer here so everyone can see. And the resolution's gonna change a little bit for you guys. You can give that a second to update. Um, what I like to do with Longtail Pro is I like to expand the URL column and the title column so I can see that really well. And then the, the other columns that they have here like EDU, Gov, Yahoo, DMOZ, honestly we don't use those very much so I kind of just, I kind of get rid of those. And I just look at these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements. URL, title, um, description, keyword, page rank, uh, site age, and SEO Moz page links. So you see really quick, there's a couple of great uh, examples of what's listed. Um, we've got um, Lowe's, a dynamic link there. You'll see Lowe's.com slash PD underscore blah, blah, blah. That's a good link for us. All right, I, I'm seeing that people are having a little bit of trouble s talking about what I'm looking at here because the uh, computer zoomed in a little too much. So I'm just gonna have to make the columns a little bit smaller. Sorry about that. Hey Rob, I don't think it's your 1970s laptop. I think it's our miserably slow internet connection. <laughs> yeah, just give it a minute here. All right, guys, so you'll see, I mean, number one is familyhandyman.com. Then we've got water-heater-repair-whatever. I know for a fact that site is like AdSense affiliate riddled, right? No question, I'm sure of it. Got a bunch of page links, but, you know. You scroll down a little further, you'll see an e-how uh, without um, the exact match phrase in the description or keyword. Here's a great, a great example of a shopping site with a dynamic link, the Lowe's, the Lowe's site here. 
Um, so that's that's probably a good uh, uh, example of that. We got a YouTube link. Um, you know, we, we we have we have another eHow link. So that's great when you see the same site that you know you can beat ranking twice on on a, on a SERP. We know that's good. So sometimes too, we like to uh, actually check out the site. Uh, uh, let's check out this one, the, the water heater one. Oh, it's gonna bring up Chrome, which I didn't want to do. But okay, so as you can see, this is absolutely 100% an AdSense site. It has the ads here. Um, uh, it's definitely a sign of a of a niche site that we could probably outrank. Yeah, because plus, it, I mean, water dash heater dash repair dash guide is absolutely a niche site, right? right. So yeah, we can we can we can beat these guys, especially if we're better targeted. Um, so pull up a, on on a Firefox, pull up a search result really quick, so we can take a look not just a long tail pro, but the search result as well. So this is going to vary a bit because this is in the Philippines. It's not uh, from the U.S. So you'll see, uh, you'll still see the family handyman number one, water dash heater dash repair guide uh, number two. Um, scroll down a little, Joe. I'm not sure if you guys got to see the water heater uh, example. Um, I may have gone through it a little too quickly for the screen to update. Okay. Um, but yeah, so scrolling down here on the SERP, we see some. So we, we see some other examples that are great. So you see another eHow further down the screen. Um, this would be a great keyword to target. Uh, as far as we know, it was available before. So that keyword is still currently available as part of our keyword research that we didn't pick up the domain. So should be available for you if you snatch it up now. Yeah, so this is actually a live example. Go back to the keyword spreadsheet. Um, of something that would work. That's what's gone already. That's water heater <laughs> thermocouple. Yeah, uh, before we did this, this uh, uh, it was it was available uh, at waterheaterthermocouple.net was available. And my computer's catching up here, so. Um, but this is something that we would mark in green and go ahead and buy. Yeah, so this would be the first one you see is a big win. We know we can make some money with that one for sure. Yeah, and what we would do is, again, um, we try to objectify this because we know that it's, it's a subjective evaluation. Um, let me just zoom out here so you guys can actually see everything that I can see. Uh, if, if, even though it's a subjective evaluation, we like to put an objective number on that so we can kind of uh, 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 compare different keywords to each other. Uh, and, and what we do is so we, we have a chance to rank column. Uh, so for this one, we think it's particularly easy, and we go ahead and we give that a five, okay? I know I see my black box is covering that up even though I don't have the black box up. I'm not sure why that's happening. Screen. Not supposed to be on the screen. Let's see. Yeah, so okay. you'll see a chance to rank of five there. Um, the next one down is a chance to rank a one. Let's take a look at why we marked it a one. Normally we would be looking at this, you know, blind, but we already obviously picked this out. So let's take a look at patio rooms. We're going to go ahead and take patio rooms and put it back into Long Tail Pro and see what the competition looks like for patio rooms. I can already tell by a two word keyword like that with patio and rooms that it's gonna be pretty difficult. You know, I just have a feel for that. I mean, I know that those two common words, words are gonna be more difficult, but let's take a look and see if that's true. Again, I'm gonna to have to zoom in here on my computer so you guys can actually see Longtail Pro because it's a uh it tends to be very big. The black box is up in the way, but it will go down, I, I believe. So let's give it a minute. Um, okay, so you guys should be able to see the results here. Uh, you know, this is a great example 
of one where it's a lot of top level domains, right, yeah, Justin? Root level domains. Yeah, root level domains, excuse me, root level domains. So here's what I don't like, right? Here's a good example. So you've got custom patio rooms, right? So that's almost an exact match phrase, or it's almost the exact match domain. It's a .com, it has a prefix. Um, the title is custom patio rooms, has the exact match in the title. It's a page rank of one, has 51 inbound links, um, has been around since 1999, <laughs> right? And then you have American patio rooms, you have uh, BL patio rooms. Um, this is not a keyword we would target. Now you could target this with an authority site, no question. But I, I even with an authority site, I mean, those first two ones that are ranking there, uh, championwindow.com, um, I mean, that's a significant site. Yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to beat out that site. So if I was to build an authority site, maybe patio rooms would be good. I mean, I'd want to research it further, but it definitely is not good for our niche process, right? Yep. Our little mini niche sites, patio rooms.net or .org would not be a good buy. So we would mark this a one and we would move on. We would not end up buying this keyword for our mini net sites. Yeah. So as you can see here, we marked it a one. Luke says, how do we know that? Because there are so many root level domains that have the exact match phrase that have way too many uh, inbound links. So it's not likely that we get ranked for it. It doesn't have eHow, it doesn't have other article directories, it doesn't have dynamic links on the first page, none of that. So all the positive signs we look for, it didn't have, and all of the negative signs, it did have. So that's a big fat no for us. Yeah. So let, let's take a look at uh, you know what we were talking about with the positive and negative signs. Remember, this one it didn't have a pre-existing AdSense site. It there were no article directories. It didn't have any subdomains. It didn't have any dynamic um, uh, shopping links. Again, my screen is updating, but bring up the positive and negatives. Uh, negatives. Uh, it had plenty of well-optimized site, right? Yeah. It had plenty of old domain names. Um, you know, it, 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 it had plenty of stuff there that was tough to beat. When it has a lot of these negative, that's when you need to give it a lower score. Uh, so I would say it's a pretty clear cut number one. But the, the tough thing is, Justin, is when you've got these ones that are not so tough. So maybe we should give one of those as an example, huh? Yeah, we'll go through one more example, uh, and then I'd like to get into some Q&A stuff here in a bit. So let's give one more example of one that's a little rough. Okay, so car audio Do carbon air filter. Car also. Okay. Carbon <coughs> air filter. All right, so go into here to Longtail Pro. Again, my screen is updating, but you should see it. Okay, it's just uh, updating a second here. We, we take carbon air filter, just copy that into Longtail Pro. Um, I'll zoom in for you guys so that you can go ahead and see what's coming up. Yeah, Kapil from Chicago mentioned, you know, uh, what's an authority site? I don't know what my definition of authority site is. I mean, a lot of people say, yeah, over 20 pages, but I think it's more than just that. It like does a lot, there are lots of different options I think the user can, can follow on your site. They can buy the product, they can go through an affiliate link, they have, you know, like you have a lot more options for the user and a lot more ways of getting the information to them, I think is what makes an authority site for me. Yeah, you know, I... I it's, it's definitely a subjective thing, but you know an authority site when you see it, uh, as opposed to a niche site. So let's take a look at this, this first page, and let's go ahead and, and evaluate this. So Justin, what do you see here right, or, or right off the top of the bat? I mean, I see uh, one root domain there, Aller Air, Air mm -hmm. right? I mean, I, that's, that's not a great sign. Um, I see uh, things like surroundair.com, right? That has carbon air filter. Right, I mean, it's targeting the word carbon air filter. It's a page rank two and it has 36 inbound links to the page, right? So I know that, you know, surround air, um, that surround air page is a page rank of two, 
probably not the easiest to beat and they're a little over halfway down the page. So could I do it? Sure, but I might. I know that with our process, I might have to do a little bit too much work to get ranked. Yeah, and, and see, I, I like to look at this thing too and say, you know, show me what's in the top three results and show me what's in the bottom three results. So um, when you do that, that gives you a good idea of how hard a page is gonna be to rank for. So in the first three results, we can see that there's like, there's, there's a, a result here that says carbon air filter, carbon air filter in the URL, carbon air filter in the, in the title, uh, and you know, has a page rank of three. So that's gonna be a, a, an entry that's gonna be difficult to outrank, even though it's general hyponics slash site slash index.php slash parts, it has it right there in the URL. Yeah, guys, so these are the ones that are really tough. I mean, I would say no to this. We would mark it a three, which means you know it's not one we would pick up for our niche sites, but it's close. We could, it's just with our process, I know that it's our likelihood of getting ranked for this one is not so hot. We'd have to do a little extra work to get sites ranked for this keyword. So it's not one that we would purchase. I'd mark it a three. It's barely under our qualifications. The real thing that makes it a three for me is the last entry. The last entry is almost an exact match domain. It says carbon air filter, right? Uh, it has it in the URL. It is an exact match. Well, sorry, it is an exact match domain. Um, it has it in the URL, obviously. It has it in the title. It's a page rank of one. The site's been around for more than three years now. Uh, and it has 17 inlinks and it's ranking in the last spot on the first page. So that means that, you know, you're probably not gonna be able to beat that. Yeah, at best, right, we'd be able to be in the bottom slot. That's not great for me. That's not, it's not good, so. All right. So, zooming So here, here's here. the thing with Longtail Pro over Market Samurai, guys. I like Market Samurai, uh, you know, um, apples for apples. If they were both the same speed, I'd prefer Market Samurai. It's fast. It's uh, it's more. It has more information in it. The problem is, it's not very quick. It would take us forever. So we'd have our agent searching for all these keywords, and it would take forever to finally get the results. Longtail Pro is quick. It's more simple. Um, it's not as robust, but it just gets us what we need faster. So it's a better tool even though it's not as robust, if that makes any sense. So again, we're gonna give this a three in our chance to rank category. We only take fives and fours. Uh, we're gonna give this a three. And, and it's very close to a four, but based on the last entry, that exact match domain coming in the, top, in the tenth spot, we're gonna give it a three and not use it. Yeah, so the only one we would buy here would be waterheaterthermocouple.net. And we would rank it a five. I think whoever did buy that has a really easy chance to get ranked on the first page. And again, you guys should know this too, is that we have a what percent chance has failed? 20? 20%. About 20% of our sites fail completely. Yeah. So you may make waterheaterthermocouple.net, build it out, get just the right content, and have it just not work for whatever reason. So know that about 20% of your sites that you build, even though they're well targeted, are just not going to work at all. All right, guys, so let's do this. We're gonna pull up your chat so we can answer any of your questions. We'll try to just kind of like blow through them as quickly as you put them up. Deborah's asking if we're using UAW. Uh, I'd say we're just starting out using UAW. We're using Submit Your Article and UAW together, um, but we're just getting into that right now. Um, so we're not terribly experienced with UAW. We're giving it a shot to see what we can do there and uh, trying to figure it out ourselves. So, um, wow, questions are flying in and I can't even keep up. <laughs> uh, why, why do this? Why invite competition? It, uh, was it question? Yeah, what do you stand to gain from doing this and inviting competition? Uh, well, here's the thing, be brutally honest, right? When you put out information like this, as clear as you can, lots of people aren't gonna follow up with it, right? So that takes out a bunch of people there from competition. There's gonna be a few that follow up with it and follow up with it well. Uh, but generally, the people that had some, that, that those of you who do it and do find success, you're gonna be really happy with us, right? I mean, you're gonna link back to us, you're gonna help give us some love, tell other people, 
Uh, your friends are going to ask you, how are you making money online? Oh, check it out. I found these guys AdSense flippers. So we end up getting a lot of love back for that by like people linking to us or you know giving us love with their friends online, that kind of thing. And it helps us expand our brand. And the more our brand is expanded, the better it is for us long term. So that's one of the reasons that we're doing this and giving it all away for free. Um, we should also say that uh, you know the guide does contain affiliate links. Um, uh, we do get paid on those links, uh, so you know that that was one of our ways of. Uh, trying to get some money back for things, but these are all services that we've used. We don't recommend anything that we don't we don't use or haven't tried out. So, yep. So we have a couple more long tail pro uh, licenses to give away. Why don't we do another um, thing on Twitter? All right. So uh, looking at the questions here, how fast do you think the guide will be copied and made a WSO of? Well, I hope if that happens, we'll we'll catch it and and shut those people down. Yeah, if you guys see anything like that or whatever, feel free to let us know because yeah. we'd love to uh, to slam them and call them out because online. Th this will be absolutely free. Another question: Are you guys using CTR theme primarily? Uh, we have a bunch of sites on CTR theme, but in the new year, we switched back to ProSense, um, and we're we're working on that. We're doing some, some more testing because we noticed that the ProSense layout tends to have a little bit higher of a CTR than CTR theme. So. Yeah. Actually, you know, guys, we're working on a theme right now. Um, we can't say much more about it, but I can tell you, I, I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, it, it, if we didn't give it out, uh, sell it, do anything like that, if we just build it for us, we would more than make up the development costs with just our own sites uh, yeah. with this theme, I think, based yeah, on what we're looking to somebody do. Somebody else is asking about niche website theme from, from Spencer. And I, 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 I want to download niche website theme so we could take a look from uh, Spencer's theme. Uh, but Joe, because we're working on a theme, he really didn't want me to. He was like, dude, I don't want us taking any of their ideas. We got our own stuff worked out for that, so let's not even bother. Let's not even take a look so that we don't end up copying any of their ideas or anything. Taylor asks, do we do backlinking right after the site is up? No, we wait about 30 days. Yeah, well, we wait more than 30 days right now because we're, oh, so we're, far, we're so That's far right. behind. But generally, 30 to 60 days is when we would start link building. We're probably outside of 60 days right now, but that's not intentional. That's because we're sucking and we can't keep up. <laughs> James asks, why wait? I'm not sure why wait what for what, but... Um, uh, what is your opinion of using Fiverr gigs as part of backlinking strategy? Um, we don't use Fiverr for backlinking because it's kind of, uh, we don't like to give out a lot of information to, to, to people on Fiverr. Yeah, we've it, also found them to be pretty low quality. Yeah, links, pretty, so. pretty low. There's a couple of reasons. Like we don't want, we don't want to give out all, a, a whole host of our sites to other internet marketers that are on Fiverr, right? I mean, that's problematic. But also, yeah, they're not going to put the love, care, and attention into uh, link building that, or anything really that we would uh, we would expect. So even though we have content written through Fiverr, um, we still want to make sure that we have our editors go through it and make sure that it's unique and do everything. Um, I'm even less less interested in doing links uh, through Fiverr. Definitely don't pay for any clicks on Fiverr. You might have seen that where you can pay for AdSense clicks. That's a really bad idea. Really bad idea, guys. Uh, another question here was, uh, how fast do you see it rank in the top 10? Um, usually it takes anywhere from 60 to 90 days to start ranking using yeah. our process. Sometimes we'll see them rank you know, 30, 45 days out, and they just get up there really quickly if it's a really easy niche. Um, but yeah, 60 to 90 days is a, is a much better test. Okay, uh, someone's saying the guide isn't loading. Not sure if you guys are having trouble with that, but we'll definitely look into that. Um, uh, we like the content from textbroker.com. It's a little more expensive though, um, of course, but I do like the content. It's pretty good. It's just kind of pricey and we try to keep our costs down. Uh, we really like iWriter.com. Uh, we can get some great, great uh, uh, content from them for really cheap. It's great for James, secondary content. James asks, "What's the, our 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 cost per site right now?" About uh, fifty bucks, a little under because we've slacked off on link building. But with link building, it's about fifty bucks. We're going to be testing some stuff that puts the price between forty and eighty. Um, we mentioned that in our last link building post on our site. So our link building strategy part two. You can read up a little bit about that and our costs. 
Uh, somebody's asking for the guide URL I'll, again. I'll, I'll put that up again right now. All right, guys. All right. Here, here is the guide URL. What what themes do we suggest for for SEO? Um, not really sure what you mean by that, but right now the two themes that we use on a regular basis are CTR theme and and ProSense. ProSense is free. Um, uh, CTR theme is paid. Um, I will. I think we have a. Um, I don't have the CTR theme URL available. Um, perhaps Justin could bring that up. Do you see any increase, decrease in rankings from switching themes? Uh, not really. No, we haven't. We haven't seen that. No. We were hoping we would actually, um, but we didn't see a bunch. We've noticed a slight decrease in CTR when we went from ProSense to CTR theme, surprisingly, um, but not not huge, enough where it made a difference, but. Um, by the way, guys, I'm gonna put a link in here to uh, a free trial of uh, SEO Moz. It's an affiliate link, we get paid if you end up going to the paid version, but it's free to sign up. It's it's ridiculous, so it, we, we think we found a way to objectify our first page evaluations. So right now, that's something we have to do ourselves but if you look at their keyword, um... yeah, there was a question actually about. Oh, hold on a second, just there was a there was a question I, I just saw spin by. How do we get the chance to rank one to five? And and you know this is very difficult. This is not easy. But what we do is we take those positives and negatives, those things to look for on the first page, and then based on that, I say how many positives does it have? How many negatives does it have? And then I assign it a rank in my mind. And, and sometimes Justin and I don't agree. Like sometimes I'll say it's a four and he says it's a three. So it's, it's really subjective, but what it's doing is it's giving a score. It's, it, it, you know, if you were an Olympic judge and you give somebody a, a, a 9.8 and the other one gives them a, a 10, you know, that's, that's just a subjective score. There's not really much you can do that. It's based on objective factors, but overall it's subjective. Um, what do we do to track our, u our rankings on Google and Yahoo? We're trying out a new service called Woosh Rush. No. Woosh Traffic, sorry. Woosh, Wooshtraffic.com. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, you should check it out if you get a chance. I'll put a link right here to Woosh Traffic. Really simple interface um, uh, that will track rankings and do little emails, daily emails to you. Donkey harnesses. I'm glad you like that, Brandon. That's yeah, that, that, that was just just for you. Um, trying to look for other questions here. There's still a oh, lot. Oh yeah, of going, going back so. really quick. Uh, I put a free uh, trial link in for SEO Moz. Here's the thing: we think it can objectify first page evaluation. So we're noticing like anything below 40 on that score. It looks like we can rank pretty easily. For 40 to 45, looks okay. 45 to 50, that's kind of difficult. Anything over 50, it looks like it would be like a two and a, two or below. Um, so let's give out our last two copies of Longtail Pro. I've got two people lined up here. Uh, the first copy will be going to uh, Amy Edwards. Amy Edwards on Twitter will be getting a uh, copy. And then we've got uh, Andy. Andy Hayes will be getting a copy. So, Amy Edwards. Somebody, somebody was looking for the link to the guide again. I'll just, I'll just paste that here. So, Amy Edwards. How many pages of content do we have our sites on average? We have five, five site, five pages <coughs> on average of actual content. Then we have a contact us, a privacy, uh, and and about us. Make sure to have the privacy page in all your sites. That's an AdSense. Uh, terms of service violation if you don't have that. Uh, you can look that up uh, and find a cookie cutter one to put on your page. What do we put on our About Us page? We write like one paragraph or what, one sentence little like, this is all about blue ski boots. If you want to know more about blue ski boots, yeah. check out our site. We have our content managers determine that. Yeah, um, it's pretty lame, really. I'll give you another uh, link to the guide in case you guys missed that. Uh, somebody's asking who won the, the Longtail Pro giveaway. Uh, the, the people that just won were Amy Edwards and Andy Hayes just won. Uh, previously we had uh, Brad Acker 
and uh, John Daniels and Debbie from Dallas. Uh, um, somebody's asking if we're going to share management tips. Um, you know, we, we did a whole uh, podcast on that, on managing your outsourced agents. So I think, I think we've covered that topic pretty well. Um, but, you know, we are looking to do some of that. I would say if you haven't listened to our latest podcast, you really should. It's all about the skill transfer process and how to train your uh, offshore and onshore employees. It's something we've used with success for years. And it's, I'd say it's <coughs> one of the best things we've been able to use as far as uh, training our staff. So definitely take a listen to our last podcast. It's fantastic information. We it, hey guys, have a couple of quick questions for you actually. Uh, we wanted to know whether you'd be interested in uh, small workshops of eight to 10 people. Um, so we're gonna send you a poll. Basically how this would work is we're thinking about doing like small webinars. We're able to do like workshops and really go over some detailed stuff and be able to help people with their sites. So I want to send you a poll and see if that'd be something you'd be interested in. Um, it would be a paid service. The thing is, is that um, we like to do all of our free information by giving it out for free to a larger audience. But what we're thinking is like a paid workshop. Like if we're going to do a, you know, a, a smaller group or more of our time to a, a smaller audience, then we could charge for that. And I think that would be pretty reasonable. So I just want to see what you guys thought. Um, see if you guys would be interested in that. Um, I think it'd be interesting. I'd be fun for us because we get to work with you like directly and like answer more of your questions, you know, and get more into depth. Yeah, Justin and I love these Q and A sessions because we're, you know, it's easier for us to work with people one on one. I mean, obviously, having a hundred and some odd people in 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 a, in a webinar, it's it's hard to get to everyone's questions. We're trying, uh, but we we think that a small workshop would be would be great. And, and the real value for us, I mean, when we do stuff free. We put it out there for free, and if it's good information, people share it, right? And so it really helps our brand expand. But if we like, you know, do a one-on-one -on -one phone call or something like that, doesn't really expand much. We've still called people or whatever. We've still had some of those, but you know, like smaller groups, we'd like to get paid for that time so that we're not, you know, it's more reasonable. I think. Right. All right. Um, another quick question for you guys. Hope you don't mind. Um, but we had an idea that we wanted to share. So. One thing we're thinking about doing is a newsletter where it kind of we just did the keyword research and showed you why we would pick a particular keyword. Uh, what we're thinking about doing is a free um, uh, keyword uh, newsletter every week where we pick out a couple of domains and show you exactly why we pick those. And then we were thinking about offering some of those domains for sale if you wanted to buy them or some potential authority site domains that we came across that don't meet our criteria for niche sites and see if maybe you wanted to pick those up as well. So we would basically just you know go through why we gave it a chance to rank of three or four or five, um, and then have those available. You can buy it for us if you like, um, and if you don't like, you don't have to. But at least you get our reasoning behind you know why it is that we picked up the the domain that we did and why we you know did what we did. Um, we could also do um, yeah you know we could also have some authority site domains on there that we just leave week after week, and if people buy them up, you know like the patiodoors.net type thing. Or maybe even better than that, you know, something with like 15,000 exact match searches, but really hard chance to rank. Um, we'll just leave those up there week after week, and if people snatch them up, we take them down and, and put new ones up. So I think it'd be a way for us to make some extra money. All we'd have to do is set a few domains aside that we use as examples every week, and we get a ton of keyword research done right now. Anyway, we just kind of you know write up our reasoning on it and send it out as a newsletter. I yeah, think Steve fun. says you know uh, he proposed a new price, uh, twenty to twenty-five bucks. Uh, honestly, Steve, I, I think that under forty dollars it'd be tough for us to, for it to be worth it. Yeah, because let's say we buy it for eight bucks, right? And then someone buys it from us. I mean. They push a button, and that goes to one of our agents to transfer the domain. I mean, we, we want to make it as smooth and easy as possible when we get the price down. But if I've just been any time thinking about it, it has to be worth something, or I just I won't even bother. You know what I mean? Like, it's not. Right. Um, just looking for more questions here. Would it be for a small length of time, or would you stick with us and get us to a certain amount of income? I guess that's for the workshop question. Um, you know, it would. It, we haven't really planned it all out yet, so I don't really know. But honestly, what we were thinking was, you know, you would be a customer. So we we do ongoing questions for customers. We help ongoing customers. So obviously, if you had questions about the workshop or how anything worked, I, yeah, I'd be able to being, do that. being able to like say, okay, we're going to stick with you until you're making this much, though. 
I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think we could do something like that because I don't know. You know, once we're off, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that would be that would be tough. I think. Uh, we the workshops are not available online uh, yet. It's something that we're just thinking about working on. Yeah. Uh, by the way, guys, we're going to do a follow up to this webinar. Uh, probably maybe three to four weeks from now, we're going to have a lot more spots. And so what we were thinking is we'd like to do a follow-up where people are going to ask questions about the guide after they've had a chance to read it. Um, anyone who's on this webinar or any of our readers or listeners can then come and do a longer Q&A with us and really kind of dig into like what our reasoning is for stuff. So um, right. again, that would be a free uh, webinar and we would have you guys come on and see what, you, uh, what your questions are. Two good questions here. One from Kyle Proctor. How many words per page and typically is it different on the front page or back pages? Um, uh, the first page we're looking at- Five to 600. Five to 600 secondary pages. Four to 500. Four to 500. So um, you know, f again, five pages of content. Uh, Brandon Wynn from New York asks, have you had any problems with uh, cease and desist? Yes. Yes. In 1,700 sites created, we've received uh, 17 cease and desist, so it's about 1%. Um, I am working with a major printer manufacturer right now. We, we own one of their domains, and they are paying us for the domain. We, we've had a couple that gave us around 500 bucks for the site. We had a few in like the 50 to $200 range. I don't know the exact breakdown, but we've had a couple that paid us around 500 bucks. A couple in the fifty to two hundred dollar range, uh, a few that never that stopped following up with us, and then others where we had to turn other you know eight to ten where we had to just turn over the domain and yeah. give it to them. So the key the key here would be Brandon is don't shy away from branded domains. You know you're saying that that you've always stayed away. I wouldn't be too worried about it. Um, you you can really negotiate your way out of this and and go ahead. Uh, and and either get money out of it or um, you know uh, make it work for you. So yeah, branded domains. I mean, I don't know. Are the co are the companies happy? Well, we normally say positive things about the company. Um, if we're outranking them, they probably wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be too happy about that. But I mean, if we're ranked below them and say positive things about their company, and we normally would link to them as well, um, it's normally not even an issue if they found it at all. Um, Kyle asks, do you recommend keeping the website as, as, uh, don't, don't follow oh. to fully built out an article or, uh, no, I wouldn't put AdSense on it before you have the content up though. That's, that's for sure. You don't want AdSense on a blank page. Um, that would probably be, uh, against the terms, but not probably it would be against the terms of service for AdSense. Right. Uh, so I would not do that. Um, Someone's still having trouble with the guide, uh, getting the guide to load. Uh, maybe just keep trying. Uh, we could be overloading the servers there, so sorry about that. We're gonna email, email out a link too later, so. Yeah, you're gonna get an email uh, from us with the link as well. A dot .com domain with HQ at the end or, uh, or, or dot .net with just the keyword. I'd say dot .net with just the keyword. Stay away from HQ. Any prefixes or suffixes, uh, Willis, they're just not gonna be the way to to, to go. Hey, Ryan asks, when you outsource content, do you offer five-star or top-level content? Do you see distinct difference in quality? No, I've done text broker. Uh, I ordered uh, high-level content. I think it was uh, no, I think it was four-star content actually, and it's for a longer article. It was for an authority site. I paid twenty-something bucks, and I had some of the three-star content that was actually better. I, I think you probably on on a, on an average level, you'd have four-star writers on average be better than your average three-star writer. Um, but I found that some three-star writers were actually better. So um, really, the, the trick with content is it's important to make sure that you find the right writers for you and stick with them. So you know, so it's not always about the price. Some are cheaper than others and are actually better. Um, normally, they, they get to a point where they figure that out and they raise their prices. Uh, but it's, it's all about finding the right writers, and that just takes time. That's a trial and error kind of thing. Uh, another question here, do you focus on social signals for better rankings? Not for these sites. Yeah, I mean, really, guys, you know, I'm pretty sure Google's smart enough to figure out any sort of tricky way to, to come up with social signals. Plus so, ones and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I probably mean, plus would our stay away Our niche sites, I and mean, we're talking about really low competition. This is stuff where Google doesn't have enough content in that niche. Like, they're pulling, 
they're pulling out their tricks because they don't. They, they, there's not enough content about that niche. So there's no reason for social signals at this level. So if you're trying to get ranked for like cheap laptops or something, yeah, I mean, you probably take that into account, but definitely not for the types of niche sites that we're building. Another question here, thoughts on automated link building like Scrapebox and article marketing we're, robot? We're anti-automation in most instances, actually, because we, you know, most automation uh, tends to uh, uh, leave some kind of signal or leave some kind of pattern. Um, so we, we try not to use automation. We get sucked into, uh, like right now we're using Submit Your Article, that's you know kind of automated, but even with our site creation, we don't automate a lot of that. Brandon asks, uh, do we use pushdown images and CTR theme? We do not use pushdown images. We use header images, but not pushdown images. A dot .org or dot .net, which is better, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that's the best answer. Uh, I don't know. Oh, we, we pick either. We'll go for either or, just depending on what's available. Yeah, yeah that's it. Uh, how about a backlink using Scrapebox? What are you using for article marketing? Not a fan. I mean, you, I'm a fan of Scrapebox for like, you know, scraping other sites and finding out what their keywords are, and, you know, like competition research, that's cool. But not for backlinking. Yeah. Um, Alex asks about what do you think about Canon, my, my site? I, you know, I won't mention your site name. I, I don't know if you want to mention that publicly, but um, it looks like a good site to me. Um, I haven't actually gone to the website, but as long as the searches check out and the CPCs check out and you're ranking and you're earning money, then yeah, it's, it's no problem. Don't worry about it being big bad Canon's going to come after you. We actually had a Canon site that was very successful for a very long time until we sold it. So. Uh, Justin here is, do, is is publishing the Manage WP um, uh, link. Uh, Manage WP, we, we really like it. It's, it makes it much easier to update your site. If you start to have more than a few sites, it's really really important. So definitely take a look at that. Uh, where do you source your images from? We we put this in our uh, email. If you're not signed up to our email, you should definitely consider signing up. Uh, but we kind of explain that. What we'll do is we'll find an image through a, a different search. And then we'll rename that image to match the content on our site so that you don't, we don't take an image that's already ranked at the top for that search and try to reuse that. We'll find it through a different search so that we can get it ranked for a new keyword. What kind of visa <coughs> do you have to have to work in the Philippines? Joe has, well, well you really don't need a visa to stay in the Philippines. Okay? It's, the, it's the Wild West out here, guys. It really for is. Real. I happen to have an SVEG, which is a special visa for employment generation, so I'm 100% legal. Um, you can get 9B visas fairly easily, but most people here, they just stay on tourist visas for a long time. Um, it's called an SVEG, special visa for employment generation. SVEG. But you need a corporation, and you need to have a lot of things uh, out here. Um, uh, cost of living out here in the Philippines, quite low. Uh, I would say you could get away with twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars all in and live quite nicely. Yeah, I mean, I, silly things, but like I'll get an hour foot massage and listen to a, like the lifestyle business podcast or something, and I spend like five bucks. So that's kind of cool. What else? What other questions we got? So many niche sites. You guys different host servers? Yes, we do use uh, different uh, hosts. Um, Manage WP got really pricey. Yeah, that's pretty lame. We weren't very, very happy with the cost increase there. We, but. we, we were not happy with that. We tried to negotiate. They, they are just, they're pretty hardcore about it. Um, Luke says, you know, everyone make sure to back up your sites. I would say even better than that, Luke, you should, ha you should be able to rebuild your sites. One of the things we do is we keep all of our images and all of our content, so if we ever had to rebuild our sites from scratch, we could do it. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, can you tell us in black and white the five best ways to rank our site? Oh, the five best ways to rank your site. Good content. 
Oh, that sounds um, lame. It's very Matt cuts of us, but like. Yeah, uh, no, sorry. Number one, good keyword research. Yeah. Um, number two, find an exact match domain. Don't go with prefixes or suffixes. Number three, don't have spun content. Use unique, original. Uh, original, good content, quality content. It, it goes through that in the guide using bullet points, using bolding. Answer the question. Yeah, answer the qu number four, answer the question yeah. of the searcher, right? Actually help the user. Write your site with them in mind to make sure you answer their query. Number five, don't use any spammy backlinking tactics. You can use things to help boost your rankings temporarily, yeah. um, but especially with the way things are going with link building right now, less spam. We've, Go way under on your site. Yeah, spam. I mean, we've seen sites with no link building whatsoever rank. It's really about your keyword research, so focus on that. Um, do you follow up with any of your purchasers? Uh, do you follow? Follow up with any of your purchases of your sites after they're sold. We have, um, some of them have done very well. Some of them have had problems. Um, the majority- I've, I've talked to guys that went down by like 30, 40% uh, monthly, like three or four months after. Um, I've talked to guys who have gone up by 200% after buying. So it's pretty random. Um, it really is. And, and, and I'm not sure what of that, like what, what which of them went up because of their efforts or ours, or which of them went down because of their efforts or ours, so. Have we kept any of our big winner sites, or have we sold them off? Um, well, we've sold off most of our big winner sites at this point, but that's not going to continue. We're, I mean, we're, we're still gonna sell off some winners, but the, the idea is to really try to see what we can do to expand. I really wanna try out the authority stuff. I, I sucked at it, I did two attempts and really failed at it. I wrote a great post about it. it's pretty popular on our site, um, our authority AdSense site failure. But I, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm getting back on that horse, man. I want to figure out how to do some good authority sites. Ultimately, I love to do awesome authority sites that answer the crap out of the, the searcher's question. That are really useful uh, content sites. I love to do that. So I really want to get into that game. Right now, we're building niche sites that people can expand into those types of sites, but they're not like that on their own. Our original sites had horrible content. It was basically for search engines. Now, if you look at some of our content, it actually answers the searcher's query. It's better at it, but I think we can get even better. Um, do you use plugins to score uh, SEO in your posts like ClickBump? No, we don't do any of that. Um, we had a question about images. Did we answer that? I think so, yeah. We use Google Images to search. We stay away from any uh, trademarked or copyrighted images. Um, you know, don't, I wouldn't focus too much on that. Don't go crazy about it. A lot of questions rolling in here, so we're trying to uh, get to it all. Will EMDs become a red flag to Google, as people are now saying? I don't think so, and the reason why is this. If you have it in your URL, of course that's what your site is about. I mean, think about it. If you were going to make a glassware site, you would put glassware in your URL. So there's, I don't see how they, would they never could. they would never penalize you for having the keywords in the yeah. domain. So no, I don't I don't I can't see how they would. They may now I I've seen Matt got talk about dialing it down, dialing the importance down, but not so much to where it's not important anymore, just taking down the importance level a little bit. That might happen, but uh, Victor's asking about non-spammy link building practices. A uh, good good thing would be to use submit your article. Um didn't get the whole link in there. Sorry, HTT. You submit your article. Um, he, he, honestly, even submit your article is a little spammy. Like, ideally, you'll take 100% unique, great content, go to Squidoo, and fill out a great Squidoo lens. Like, you'll go to Hub Pages and fill out a great hub. You know, like, that's, that's, you know, in a perfect world, that's what you would do. Now, submit your article saves you a ton of time, and it's like semi-automated, which is why we use it, um, and saves you a ton of cost to going to each one of those places and submitting that, that information directly. MB asks, have you noticed Google serving up a higher CPC for synonym for some search terms? I haven't. That's a great question. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, by the way, some I don't know if we mentioned this, but Open Site Explorer. Um, oh yeah, if you're looking for a Yahoo Site Explorer, again, that free trial of SEO Moz, it's free, but it gives you unlimited access to Open Site Explorer, and we've been using the hell out of that um, recently. 
um, to take a look at sites, their backlinks, kind of dig into some authority sites that we're taking a look at. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, Definitely check out the keyword research module of SEO mods. You're going to see us posting a little bit more about that in the future because I think it's just another metric we need to use for our keyword research. And I think it's going to help us out a lot, Joe. And Joe doesn't even know much about this because it's been something I've been looking at, but it's I'm going to show it to him. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. Phil asks, have any of your sites been click bombed? Uh, perhaps. We don't know. Um, we, we definitely get uh, clicks reversed all the time. Yeah, I've, I've seen where like we got like you know four four dollar click 16 bucks and then boop, two minutes later it's gone so i don't know if that was a click bombing I, I think it was maybe a competitor or just maybe kind of a donkey going through and clicking and not you know, i don't know who knows who knows what it was but adsense took it away uh, but we haven't had it on any kind of like mass scales and i think you know just haven't had it. um um what does a web what does selling a website entail um well I would say you, you need to have a platform to sell on, something like Flippa. Uh, you could go there and sell by public auction, uh, and and you know you could start there, and then you know going to need to provide good post sales support. Support. We have a whole bunch of posts on our site under under selling. Yeah, go websites. go to adsandslippers.com, hover over where it says flipping websites in the middle, and then scroll down to selling websites. Click on that. And that will give you our best, uh, you know, podcast, our best posts on selling sites. We we hold nothing back in those posts in our in our um, podcasts. So we actually do give you our best tips. We're not, you know, giving you some and you know putting the rest behind a paywall or something. No, it's all free. Um, John, uh, Jeff Mendelson says, "Did you guys start using Gecko boards? How is it for you? You know, I." I, I fooled around with it a little bit. You tried I, that. I right? really wanted to get a good gecko board up, but I, I just um, unfortunately it's on the to do list. I just have to develop a, a solution there. Um, Didn't they stop following up, or did you stop following up? Uh, I stopped following up because I needed to do a little custom programming for it. So oh I yeah, yeah, yeah. To hire someone we, to so do we that. dumped it. We're like, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, do you have any backup plans? If Google account gets banned, no. But I, I read something about um, MediaNet. Is that right or Media something? Everyone's talking about it, saying it's it looks like a reasonable alternative to AdSense. Um, I don't know though. Yeah, the, the only problem with different um, uh, alternatives to to, to AdSense is going to be is they're not going to have as many advertisers. So, you know. Uh, uh, how much is my website worth if if I haven't made any money and I want to flip it? So, usually websites are worth based how much revenue they make monthly. But that's not always the case because there are sites that don't earn anything that have had a ton of coding go into them. So, have you built out like really cool software um, and you want to flip that? I mean, that's not a game we're into. So, I can't really price your site. Um, it, it's going to depend. Yeah, MediaNet, Steve Wyman put in there. It, it's worth checking out if you're looking for an alternative to AdSense. We haven't used it. I can't speak to it at all. But I've heard other people say uh, positive things about it. Have you tested any affiliate marketing on any of your niche sites? We, I did. Barely. Yeah. Barely. And, and, and the only thing, here's the only thing with the way we do stuff, guys. I mean, we created a lot of sites. We scaled the crap out of it, okay? And, and that's hard to do on an affiliate basis because... You have to sit around and kind of find, find out the a right new affiliates. affiliate program. And then, you know, I'm more interested in creating more sites. So I'd rather sit here and do keyword research and find new sites and make those sites rank and then get them to earn. Now, once they're ranking and, and they're doing well with AdSense, should we switch those to affiliate? Perhaps. Well, listen, a great way to make extra money is to buy an AdSense site and to put a better monetization method on. So affiliates or maybe even your own product, maybe you can drop ship products or sell your own stuff. But that's not the easiest thing to do. AdSense is, is easy because it's like an informational content you can put up. If you're selling something, you need some pre-sell content. So if you plan on buying AdSense sites and flipping there, changing them, change their monetization and either keeping them or selling them, you have to know how to take informational content and switch it to pre-sell content and how to find the right products that will give you high conversions. So it, it's a skill there. But if you get good at that skill, you can make a ton of money by buying up ads and sites and, and better monetizing them. I, I don't know how to do that. I mean, I'd love to learn that skill myself. Uh, we've been kind of just hammering out sites right now. But it's something that we want to get better at too. Remember, guys, we're pretty new at this. I'm not. We're not internet marketers. We're outsourcers. Right. I mean, Bill asks, 
uh, great question. How do you guys stay focused without going for the next shiny object? And I, you know, Joe I, actually has a set of blinders for me, <laughs> and he puts them on my head when I start uh, looking around. No, I don't know. We we do kind of test out some of the shiny stuff, but like. I don't know, we're pretty good at like um, saying no to things. I think we've gotten good at that over the years. At like, just no, not interested in that. Nope, I know I don't want to do that. Nope, yeah. not, not and good. And as much as we, we, we dislike corporate America and, and you know, we don't work there, we want to have our own uh, business and stuff, we learned good techniques and we learned a lot of good stuff working in corporate America. I mean, you can't be working at a job and just be all over the place and have a mind that's not focused or your boss will be all over you. So, you know, you, you kind of learn to, to stay on track, and there's a number of methods that I use to keep myself uh, going. Um, another question here, how many hours a week do you guys work on, on average on your business? How do you unwind after a long day at work? Uh, how many hours a week? I don't know. That's tough to say because we don't work that hard on the niche sites. That's mostly all, like, every week the ones that are created and grown. But we spend, I spend quite a bit of time on like trying to expand our brand and like get our name out there, uh, build up our readership, you know, that type of thing. Um, a little bit of time we spend on the outsourcing business and we're thinking about spending more expanding that a bit. Here's the thing. I think we should do like a podcast. We should write some content under a different brand, under outsourcing, because we know that so well. And I think, you know, from people here on the ground, a lot of the outsourcing experts that you hear are like, you know, I've never even been to the Philippines or like I've never been to India and like really, you know, live there, work with the people there. So like, I think we give really interesting perspective there. I, I'm, I'm really kind of, I'm stoked about doing some content on outsourcing because I think it's something we can speak to passionately. Okay, so just looking here, down through the questions. Oh yeah, if you're looking who to email for uh, One Long Tail Pro, we've got your names written down and your stuff. Email us at info at trybpo. That's T-R-Y, B as in boy, P as in Paul, O as in Oscar, dot com. Info uh, at trybpo. Quick question here. Have you ever used paid traffic or PPC for other businesses, but not for niche sites? It's, it's not allowed, so... You can't. Um, yeah, uh, take, take. You can't. You yeah. can't try to arbitrage like what you can make from from paid traffic. There's too. some debate on whether or not you can do it from Bing to an AdSense site or whatever. But I'm not really going to get into that. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Um, but we have used it for other sites, uh, Twitter and then other companies we work for. So, yes. Uh, okay. What so about link building from Odesk? You can. You can. I, I think link building from Odesk is a hell of a lot better than Fiverr or like Warrior Forum. I'd be scared to do it from Warrior Forum from some other internet marketer. I mean, if they're fantastic, why aren't they link building for themselves, right? You know, I would also say, like, instead of going to Odesk, why not get yourself a full-time VA? And, and we, we recommend Virtual Staff Finder. I'm going to put a, put a link in here. It's really, really good. We've actually hired from Virtual Staff Finder ourselves. We currently have a contract with them. We're looking for a second agent with them. It's $350, 350 bucks, and they'll find you the VA. And then you pay the VA directly. There's no middlemanning. So they're not going to gouge you for, you know, margin on this agent that works for you long term. It's a one-time fee. And they, they set up the interviews for you. It's really, really good. Have you guys ever tried Hittail? Yeah, BJ keeps asking if we tried Hittail. I have not. I know the guy that bought Hittail. He's a Dynamite Circle member. Um, yeah. Rob, Rob Walling, right? I don't remember his name. But, you know... The thing is, and we keep we keep coming back to this, our strategy is really to stamp out the sites and move on. Now we might change that in the future. We might want to build sites out a little bit better, but right now it's been just chug the machine, create more, create more, create more. Um, so no, we don't really focus on expanding them once they're done. We try to get them up, ranking and earning, and then flip them to other people. At what stage do we recommend setting up an LLC? I don't know. I mean, I, I think the worst thing you can do is like spend a bunch of time focusing on your logo and your LLC and stuff before you've even started. Um, once you're bringing in some real money, whatever that real money means to you, as far as dollar amounts, um, then maybe you should consider setting up an LLC. But prove that, that the concept is viable for you first. You don't want to start it, set up all the LLC, get the site set up, whatever, 
and then have it suck and not work for you and spend all the time, effort, and energy on something that doesn't work. Amy, the, info, the, the email address is info at trybpo.com. You can just put it in there. Yeah, Colin, uh, thank you for thanking us. Two hours is a long time to stay on the, on the webinar, but we want to make sure we get to everybody's questions. Um, Yeah, guys, I think that's about it. Um, how often after you launch the site do you see it settle in the SERPs and really start 60 the to 90 days. Yeah, yeah, 60 to 90 days. Uh, does AdSense take out takes? I'm not sure I understand your question. Luke, Luke, you might want to ask your question again. How many, uh, how do you determine the secondary keywords that you focus your inner pages on? Ian, that's, that's in the guide. We'll go over the secondary keyword research. It's similar to primary, maybe a little less detailed. So we go over that in the guide. Uh, that'll be easily explained there and not here. It'd take a little while for Oh, us Luke is asking about taxes. Yeah, we, we have everything go through a U.S. corporation. Um, and we file our taxes in the U.S. as we would normally. We know all kinds of interesting tax stuff, but probably not something we'll be discussing on Yeah, we're not podcast. <laughs> like, this is my real name and stuff. Like, you know, I'm not going to get into tax shelter stuff right. on podcasts or webinar. All right. All right, guys. So that is it. I think we're going to go ahead and... Uh, and shut this down. I've never used backlinkbooster.com, so I can't speak to that, Carl. Um. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we'll be ending the, the webinar now, and see you later. Yeah, thank you guys so much.